Do you ever feel like you have so many deadlines, meetings, so many things to juggle in a day, and then you come home and you don't want to deal with the mess that is in your house? And the thought of organizing is another impossible task. But here's the secret. Organization is not about trendy baskets or being a minimalist martyr. It's about creating a system that's for you, not for me, not for her, not for them, but for you. It's about systems that cut through the chaos and let you breathe. Why? So that you can spend more time with your family and connect with them. So that you're not rushing in the mornings, shouting, scrambling, looking for that one item that you really need right now. In this video, we are getting rid of the fantasy self in the fantasy home with the fantasy life. And we are going to deep dive into five powerful tips that are going to help you conquer the daily juggle so that you can reclaim your sanity. Hi friends, I'm Simply Sherry and I empower busy working moms just like you to flourish by creating a home you love. Number one, know your why. This is where we define your goals. What makes you feel organized? Is it the quiet confidence that you know exactly where your kids soccer cleats are? Is it the satisfaction of a completed to-do list? Imagine yourself every weekday morning with a smile on your face instead of yelling for your kids to get ready so that you could head out the door before you hit traffic. Or is it coming home from a long day at work knowing exactly where things belong and that dinner is ready. So what I want you to do is take a piece of paper or a notebook or your journal and write down your goals. Write down your why. Why do I want to be organized? Why do I want my kitchen to be organized? Because I want to be able to cook good home cooked meals for my family. Why do I want the kitchen table clean and cleared of clutter? because I want to foster conversations and connect during dinner time. Why do I want a good landing zone for my kids' backpacks so that I don't miss a permission slip that I need to sign or be able to look at the beautiful artwork that they bring home every day? Why would I need a reading nook? Well, because I love to wind down with a good book and a cup of tea. I want a space in my house that when the rest of the family knows I'm there. That is my me time and they're not going to disturb it. So write those down. And then when you're done, take a look at it. Imagine how that organization is going to make you feel, how it's going to take away the stress, how it's going to give you more time, how it's going to take away the guilt of not having enough time with your kids because you're scrambling around doing other things. What words come to mind? Write those down. Smooth, seamless, stress-free, calm, in control, time, peace, memories, happiness, joy, connection, light, mindful. I think this is a really important exercise. And I know we do this with other areas of our lives, but why don't we do it for our homes, right? But now you, I'm suggesting this so that you can take the action now. Who cares if you haven't taken the action before? Now you can take that action. So when my kids were growing up, I actually had a space on the couch in the living room. So we're fortunate to have a living room and a family room and both of them had their own room. So we kind of had our spaces, but the living room is a shared space. And I kind of like that area. I didn't want it in my bedroom because if I were on my bed, then maybe I'd fall asleep. But I had a part of the couch that when I'm sitting there, my kids knew that that was my me time. And that's where I read. And at that time, I just, I loved reading books. And I had a basket under the table the side table was one of those where there's space underneath. So I had a basket there of the books that I was currently reading. It was also a place where I had my journal and my Bible there. And so when they saw me there, and of course I didn't pick times of the day, like when it's dinner time or 
when they needed time with their uh, needed help with their homework. It was certain times that obviously we could have um, more flexibility and you know we're not like heading out the door or whatever right there wasn't something urgent or built into our schedule so that was my me time and they they knew it was a visual visual cue that i'm going to be reading it was usually for about an hour sometimes an hour and a half and that was really something that energized me so I mean, even that that could be a word energized like being organized is gives me energy um energizes me and as far as the organization, it was like, you know, I'm locating a space, a space that I want organized. So that area always had to be free of clutter. And uh, the only thing that I stored in that basket were my books. So there's not going to be, um, I mean, I could have put a blanket, but at that time, I think my blanket was just over the arm of the chair. And then something um, that we loved in our household, and my daughter still does it now, even though she's in college, was that she loves to bake. And so we had tried two different spots in the kitchen before we used to have a cabinet right up to the right of the stove, which, which uh, housed all her baking supplies. And then we tried a shelf or a section in the pantry on the shelves. And then uh, one day I said, well, why don't I just make her a baking cart? So because she doesn't bake every day, so I didn't want to take up the real estate of that cabinet or even the pantry shelf, pantry shelves. So I got a cart and um, we put all her baking supplies there. And so now when she bakes, even when she comes home and she bakes, like she baked last week and made some amazing scones, she pulls out that baking cart and, you know, uses whatever and then she could push it back in. Or she can just open a drawer and take whatever she needs. So organizing that uh, actually benefited the whole family, not just for her to streamline her process and make it easier for her to find her ingredients. She knew exactly where the measuring cups, spoons, you know, all the other little gadgets that she has for baking or the baking sheets and things like that. She knew exactly where they were, where to access, access them, and then where to put them back. But it was also great for us because as it was, uh, as we were able to make it easier or more streamlined for her to bake, we benefited from the baked goodies. And some of my favorite things that she's baked were um, champagne cake. Mm, that was my request. She regularly makes, um, uh, what's that called? Those like the shortbread cookies. And, um, she makes during the, the, the holidays, she makes these hot cocoa, uh, cookies. And then of course, another request I have are those scones. Cause it takes time, you know, it takes time to bake. So organizing it for her, she, she just loved it. And she's, um, been able to use, uh, even the lessons on how the, that cart was organized for her. So now that she's in her own space, she is able to organize her space because she she er, understood the principles of organizing, which is not just about pretty baskets, right? It's about creating a system that works for her. Number two, embrace systems, not stuff. Again, what is a system? A system is a workflow. It's the processes on how you do something. So there are certain things that you have to do that honestly, you really don't wanna do. Uh, and one of those things for me is ironing. Okay. Like, uh, like even the word is just like, it's not a good word for me. Okay. It's a dirty word. <laughs> it's a bad word. And if I could hire someone to iron, then they would be hired. So what did I do with the ironing board? Well, what I've done is I found clothes that don't need to be ironed. And the few that do, let's say like a suit jacket or uh, sometimes my cami, my silk cami, honestly, I just go to the dry cleaner. So it's in my budget, those things that need to be ironed or dry cleaned. But I've also set my ironing zone to make it a lot easier. And one of the things I bought was a um, those steamers, you know, where you just steam the clothes. And listen, I'm okay steaming the clothes. And so, Yes, the iron and the ironing board is still there. My husband, he totally doesn't mind ironing. So sometimes I have him iron and he's cool with it. So 
Think about that. Sometimes those systems may involve delegating it to someone else. They don't mind. Hey, he does it. So, but again, like I said, it's not like every day. It's not even probably once a month where I need to iron clothes. Or maybe it's an it's that one evening where I have something that needs to be ironed a little bit and he'll do that for me. Or I just do the steam clean. And so now when you say iron, I just know for myself and my zone or my ironing station, it's set up, the system is set up for what works for me. Okay, maybe like laundry is your arch nemesis because there's five of you in the household and you're doing all the laundry. Well, maybe one of the organization systems that you need to put in place is that when they are age appropriate, they do their own laundry. So for me, when I was growing up, you know, we used to have gym class. Do you remember gym class where you had to wear a uniform and that dreaded when you had to change in the lockers and then they forced you to take showers with like, there's no stalls. <laughs> yeah, that was a little traumatic for me, but you know, it is, it, it is, it was what it was. Who knows how it is now? But, um, yeah, so when I was 11, which was middle school, I had my gym uniforms. Probably, I think we had two or whatever for the week, three. I don't know how many we had. And my mom promptly said, oh, let me teach you how to wash your gym uniform. Because she worked during the whole week, right? And so she wasn't going to be there to make sure I had a gym uniform all the time. So it was age appropriate at 11 to learn how to do my own laundry which was perfect. So every Sunday night, or maybe it was Saturday morning, I don't know, I did my laundry once a week and I made sure my gym uniforms were clean because I didn't want to go there with a stinky gym uniform. So when my kids were 11, like clockwork, I taught them how to do their own laundry. <laughs> so it was a great lesson from my mom. They're tall enough to, you know, reach down. And if your machine is, they have to reach down, they're tall enough for that. They're smart enough. They can read what is detergent, what is softener. They know what a dryer sheet looks like. So completely age appropriate. When my kids were little and I got this idea from a mom uh, at that time when my son was born, her kids were like seven or eight. And she recommended to me to have a cabinet, a lower cabinet in my kitchen that would be my kids' cabinet. That's where we kept their bowls and cups and um, eating utensils their sippy cups, whatever, so that even at toddler age, they knew that that's their cabinet and that's where they can put their stuff or they can find their sippy cup. And I put a bunch of Tupperware in there, you know, anything like they could beat on, uh, hit on like a drum and they could use the utensils and play like a drum. And so that lower cabinet was not just for practical things that you know, they needed to use as far as eating or drinking on a daily basis, but it was kind of like a fun cabinet too. So they knew they could take out that bowl and bang it a little bit with a utensil and they could be there in my kitchen on the floor while I cook or I clean it in the kitchen. So that was a perfect organized system for us. So instead of looking at ironing, or laundry or age appropriate chores or involving the kids or the rest of the family into creating organized systems as something frustrating or overwhelming, but looking, look at it as an opportunity to be creative, to dig deep in, dig deeper into yourself and think about or become self-aware on how you think, how you process how you look at a space, right? Because it's for you. So you saw with the ironing, I, I knew I wasn't, you know, I mean, I tried for years pretending like I can, I like to iron. And I even had days of the week where I ironed and I had everything ironed so it's ready for the rest of the week. And then finally I said, you know what, Sherry, do you really like to iron? And then Sherry said to me, no, you, no, you really don't. Okay. And I was like, okay, I'm listening to you. So I finally listened to myself and I said, one, I don't like ironing, but how am I going to get away from that? Well, you know, not everything is iron free, but I can get a lot of things iron free. Do I need to create a budget for the few times that I use the dry cleaning? Yes. Can I get the steamer, right? Yes. Can I ask my husband, the once in a blue moon who loves to iron, to iron something for me? And he said, yes, honey, I would love to iron that for you. I love you so much. So I looked at it as an opportunity. What can be better? 
And then once I figured that out and I implemented those changes, hey, you know, it's not my arch nemesis anymore. So example your laundry, if your laundry is your arch nemesis, are your kids old enough to bring their own dirty clothes to the laundry room? That could help you with a step. Are they old enough to fold their clothes and put it away in the drawers or baskets or hang their clothes? Well, if they're only old enough to throw things in a basket, maybe your socks don't need to be folded nicely and they just throw all the socks into a basket after they're washed. You know, take some time. Once you see your goals, pick the one thing. Okay, the one thing that would really, really help me is to deal with this laundry, you know, laundry pile. Okay, the never ending laundry, the mountain, right? Let's climb that mountain of laundry. That's the one thing I wanna focus on. Think about where is it not working? How can I make it work? Do I need to take out less? Do we need to double the, um, the days of when laundry is done? How can my kids help? How can they be, be involved? What will it teach them? All right, let me know in the comments below. What do you think is that one space, that one area of your home that you want to start working on as far as creating an, a system for it? Number three, technology is your friend. Utilize the apps and the tools that people have spent a lot of brain power to create for us to make our lives easier. Keep in mind that technology is not the end goal. It's a tool to get us to the end goal. You know, your goal isn't, let me find technology for everything. If technology works for that certain task or for that system that you want to create, then use it. Just like when you're hammering a nail into the wall or a piece of wood, you're not gonna hammer the nail with your fist or the heel of your shoe, although I've done that, <laughs> I've done that before and it doesn't work well, right? Or uh, what else have I, I've used a stapler. <laughs> you know, the hammer really is a very good tool to hammer that nail. That's even why it's a verb. It's a noun and a verb, to hammer that nail into the wall. Just like certain, when you find the right app or the right platform, um, it's going to help you move quicker or with less obstacles to get to your end goal. Example, there are shared calendar apps that would be great, especially when your kids start having extracurricular activities or your work schedules with your spouse doesn't, doesn't necessarily align, like maybe one works a little bit later than the other. And you know, you can um, assign tasks there. There are grocery shopping and meal planning apps that could help you. And for me, you know, sometimes I switch between written grocery lists and electronic. And I've always found that I miss something when I write my grocery shopping list, but electronic, I can change it up more quickly and cross out stuff when I need to. Or And, and it's always with me because it's in my phone. Number four, delegate and empower. Teamwork makes the dream work. I mentioned age appropriate chores. So this is where you're gonna really think about, you know, maybe take that journal or that piece of paper again and write there uh, the ages of your kids and what do you think are age appropriate chores for them that they are currently doing? And so put a check mark there, good job. Or maybe there's ones that uh, they haven't, you haven't started them helping them start or you've tried to get them to do it and they haven't. So write those down. What the Maybe two to three chores that you think are age appropriate. So even if you have one kid, them doing two to three, uh, your one child doing two to three chores, whether it's just bringing their dirty laundry to the laundry room, right? Or putting away their uh, cup and bowl or putting their dish into the sink. I mean, that saves you, can you imagine that? Um, for five, seven days a week, and then throughout the year, how many minutes that saves you. So you can make a chore chart where, um, you know, uh, I would say first discuss with your family and say, hey, you know, I need help with the chores. I think it's, you're at an age where you could help more in the house and I think it'll be fun and we can make it fun. Um, and it's really like being a team, you know, this is team and whatever your last name is. 
and uh, have that family meeting, agree to the chores that they want to do, or uh, see like, okay, let me, you know, it, it's like ownership, no matter how old they are. And then you put those chores, you could do a chore chart. So I used the chore chart for a long time with my kids. And when their chores were done, you know, you either have a check mark or you put that little sticker or if it's a magnet, ours was like a magnet with like a wood, wood things. And you would put it's uh, the wood uh, picture on there, which is like a check mark. So if it was like um, uh, making your bed. And so the little wood piece, you would put it on every day that they did it. So they tried to fill up the whole week. You know, you can use stickers, you can use check marks, whatever, right? But it was like a daily reward that they get that thing. And if after so many stickers, they got a prize. Or if you're not into, you know, those types of rewards, then don't do it, do something else. Or don't do anything, but, you know, give a big hug. That's a, that's a great reward in and of itself. And then you can always revisit, you know, if they haven't been doing the chores, they, maybe it's just too hard for them. It's not the right time. Maybe they should do it right after school. Maybe it's right after dinner. And so those are things that you can tweak and pivot, but you have to come up with the plan first. So one of the things that I did with my kids was um, the grocery shopping. So I would make the grocery list and then I'd bring them to the grocery store and um of course, when they were older, maybe more um, towards middle school, they could kind of go on their own. But when they're younger, they stay with me. We go down the aisle and then they would look, for example, if we had to get potatoes. So I taught them how to put the potatoes into the bag and, you know, kind of figure out how much it would be by weighing it. What, how much do you think this is? We'd write it and or um sometimes or a lot of times my daughter would be the one with the calculator so we would add everything up to just make sure we would stay in budget so that's the thing that you know they learn budgeting they learn how to grocery shop they learn where things are kind of in the grocery store you know right the vegetables are here to the right and etc whatever the different aisles are and then when they come home they can see that the meals that were cooked let's say with that with those potatoes um, and they can feel a part of it. And then about once a month, we would always go to the Asian store because it's about a 30 minute drive from us. And so this was fun for them. <laughs> uh, so I would give them a budget, $10 each, even, even my husband. <laughs> and so they would go and find their stuff. Of course, if they were not old enough, they would go with my husband so I can do all the other grocery shopping and they would, you know, figure out what's the, what's $10 worth. And then, so the next time they go, they're like, oh, okay, I had the pokey, the, the, what is that, the pokey? Anyway, they had a certain snack. And so like this time, they're like, oh, okay, that took like half of what I got last time. So I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to get three things that would replace that so I can have more. And it was, uh, you know, they, they loved it. And to this day, you know, my son is a full-fledged adult working with a great job, my daughter is full-fledged college student. To this day, whenever we go to the Asian store, they always look at me and they're like, what's my budget? <laughs> and you know what's funny is, I feel like they do that to me all the time, whether we're in the Asian store or not. Number five, embrace flexibility. Now I talked about this in my the previous video, watch that if you wanna see five ways to create a home you love. But today we're talking about organization redefine systems that work for you so you have to embrace flexibility because life throws you curveballs there are speed bumps example you were <laughs> this happened to us um my when i was a soccer mom which i love being a soccer mom i should do a video on how to be a soccer mom um so i did that for about five years and so we had this brilliant idea my husband and i to go hiking that saturday morning knowing that the soccer game is about a 45 minute drive and that it starts at 1 p.m. or something like that. So we said, yeah, let's go hiking. We'll be back in time. Of course you'd be back in time if you left at seven, okay? Well, then we got to two miles down and we're like, oh, let's take that other loop because I thought it was five miles and then we would be back by 12, we get to the game, etc. And I was in charge of the canopy Oh my goodness. Okay, listen. 
like the canopy for the whole team. Well, lo and behold, it was nine miles. And we are literally at the five or six mile marker. And it was like, it was like noon, almost noon, noon-ish. And I looked at my husband and I said, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> another four miles, five miles. I'm not going to make it in like 10 minutes. So I said, okay. So we scrambled and we were like, okay, honey. He's like, I can run down, get the canopy, get Sicily to um, the game. And oh yes. And then the other thing, I was in charge of the oranges and drinks that day, but you don't need those till the end of the game. So I had till two o'clock. And he had till one. So I was like, okay, honey, thank you so much. I apologize. I thought this loop, he was like, yeah, I was kind of wondering too. Anyway, so I'm, I'm trekking along and it was getting hot that day, you know? Uh, anyway, he made it, <laughs> he made it just in time to get my daughter, bring her, bring the canopy. And then I made it just in time to bring the oranges and stuff. So sometimes the curveball comes from yourself. But anyway, deliberate, not deliberate, unexpected, whatever, right? Things don't always happen the way you even thought you planned it. So be flexible, adapt, communicate. So some practical things is to um, schedule in buffer time, right? I mean, I was the worst at this. Then I, when I learned um, time blocking, that worked. That works a whole lot better for me. But I used to plan like every 15 minutes of my life. No joke. You should see my old planners all the way from way back when I was in college. So when you have buffer time, if something keeps you off track or gets you off track, you can still maneuver and get back on track and you haven't like lost that time or wasted that time. Example, like you, uh, every Sunday, you know, like I know it takes this much time to get to church. So I don't put the exact time, you know, I add 10 minutes, of course, like maybe three minutes is to park and walk five minutes. Right. But you add that buffer time and it's actually built into our weekly schedule, or maybe you have an event where you haven't been there. Um, maybe there's a school event you've never been there before. And no matter what it says on Apple maps or Google maps, you've got to buffer in that time. So things like that, right. It makes sense to us. Like, yeah, it's our first time to go there. We don't know what the parking's lot. We, the parking is like, we don't know if there's going to be traffic, right? So you, you buffer in time. Well, we can do that with our lives, you know, buffer in time, buffer in, um, not just into our schedule, but into our organizing our schedule so that it's a habit of you're always putting in a little bit of extra time just in case. You can also do a catch all list. So you might have a to-do list and those things to-do lists work for you. You like crossing it out. You like putting a check mark, but then things come up and then you add it to the bottom of your checklist and then your checklist never gets done, right? It just keeps getting, you know, like those receipts is like, it just keeps printing out. It's long and you're like, what did I buy? Right? So do a separate list. So you have your to-do list. Now do a catch all list or whatever you want to call it unexpected list. So now that you have that on the, on your list, figure out the times when you're going to take care of those things that are separate from here, right? So that this can be done and those can be checked off. And then these can be checked off slowly, but surely. And as far as, uh, maybe something organized in your home, because those are kind of productivity. Uh, one thing I've made is a, uh, get well cart and it's a cart just like the baking cart, but it's a separate cart. And on there, I have things for your, um, kind of over the counter types of illnesses. Now, if obviously someone is sick, sick and they have to go to the hospital, it's not going to have those stuff in there. You can watch the video for that. My get well cart, but they have stuff like I even have stuff for, um, uh, like throw up bags, right. Um, for those times when my kids or my husband or I were sick and we just roll up the cart. Um, it was usually in the family room. I had them stay in the family room so I can watch them since I was mainly in and around the, the 
first floor of our house where the kitchen is, you know, so like they wake up, oh, I don't feel good. You know, that's a little bit unexpected. That's a little bit of a curveball. But having that sick cart made me feel secure that whatever we need immediately, you know, in the short term, that can be taken care of. And then I even had a chart there where you can monitor like the temperature or when you give the medicine. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like, I like stuff like that, making stations and zones and organizing things like that, even for the unexpected. So there you have it, five powerful tips to redefine organization, create the systems that actually work for you. Number one, know your why. Number two, embrace systems, not stuff. Number three, technology is your friend. Number four, delegate and empower. Number five, embrace flexibility. Remember progress over perfection. Take that piece of paper where you wrote down your goals. Tell me in the comments below that one thing you're going to start working on. I'll be launching my course soon, how to set up a landing zone to save you time in four easy steps. Thanks for joining me. I can't wait to see how you create a home you love. I'll see you next time. Bye. Are you tired of the daily scramble to find your keys, purse, work projects, backpacks, homework, and permission slips? Reclaim your sanity with these exclusive tips for setting up a stress-free landing zone. These strategies are for busy working moms just like you to save time and restore peace to your home. Enter your email and you'll receive a one-page PDF with four easy steps on how to set up a landing zone to save time. Create a home you love.